Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. Prince Harry is being urged to leave the Invictus organization for becoming grossly seduced by his narcissistic wife Meghan. Censure me in public like you don't want to read me or ever support vote vets, over 2,000 of have walked because Harry's stench is all over it, again. What then, do the Invictus Foundation and by extension Invictus Games look like in the future? But what will the royal family have to do with it? One more thing I want to address is the deal made by Meghan and Harry with Netflix. Let's see how these two work. I understand from my sources that at St. Paul's Cathedral in London next week, there is going to be an event for perhaps the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games, he shared. Wait. We will see everything at May 8, he is supposed to be there at St. Paul's as per the schedule, and as it seems now few words might come out of his mouth for the ceremony too. Even so, prior to the event some calls now and again have been received by Prince Harry, who already deals with daily tonight morning sickness advising him it's time he tendered his resignation too. Veterans say the only reason for his treacherous behavior is the influence of Meghan Markle, his narcissistic wife Judicial Dashinkt is some feel he is trying to make Harry appear grander than he really is by associating himself with Invictus, and 2,000 veterans have already left enormous one by one. I have read that some veterans are angry with Harry being a participant in these conversations because they feel it all sounds too royal. Now, if you include Meghan Markle, then this event may sound not just too royal but weak sauce. Well, while I'm going to agree and concede some ground on sentiment and even that their feelings were hurt, I don't think anything about Meghan Markle brings out any royalness in you. Okay, Meghan most definitely did too and tried to turn it into her little fashion show with all the red carpets as well, all the pomp and pageantry, but that is the last thing military people want. Veterans like to get fixed up and cleaned up. But yeah, this isn't about that though this is an event that should be concentrating on the courage and bravery of our veterans, a source told Fox News. She wants herself front and center while other royals take some sidesteps from duties on occasion. Oh, it's so hilarious to me that when she whiffs with her fashion, even Meghan Markel, suddenly Invictus is using Harry as their very own personal fabric dictator. The shamelessness of this woman. She will take any opportunity that comes along to be seen in public and, they, will share her photo with the press. And, I mean, if anything that is the exact opposite of having been noted among these alleged children. They've got to take it like a man, Lacey says. Harry and Meghan need to stop playing the victim. We have to shoving them in our faces. And we also don't want to see them there's no wisdom they can offer anyone, so, I mean, Harry was barely in the military most of the time, like nothing. He should be ashamed to stand there on the stage, next to the true heroes. But then, there is that strange behavior regarding Meghan Markle. She comes off as so fucking entitled, invasive, and domineering. I think it's that maybe people don't know how to react when they're around her, and so she goes out in public to do all these things with cameras everywhere and people watching I don't she is not going to get any responses from people if there is a camera in her face because then she can just walk away and start crying victim, oh my gosh they are all so racist, or something like that and we know what she's trying to imply here right? I mean, come on. She's a masterpiece, clearly. I can't understand why the Invictus people are unable to control her. Probably doesn't have much do with that they don't want spy underscore perhaps they're okay with Invictus becoming the Meghan and Harry show. Honestly, Invictus organizers really need to do better. Like really. What the neophytes need to understand, and here's a hint, it isn't Meghan. There might be people that need to talk about the ones, in this case the royal family, the people, organizations who have contributed to Meghan's success more so than Spotify has done, and those are, but not exclusive of the royal family did, Dior did. Anna Winter other than 40, something crossed next blank, of 50 supposed friends sent Jamto as well. Alone turned Meghan down, I guess. It got so that people were really starting to turn on her. The Beckhams did, the Cloonies did. 
Where's Meghan Markle's A-lister mates right now? Asterisk. Asterisk she just slammed the couple anyway. Back to the main topic well, I'm not sorry if I don't see anything wrong with these veterans speaking out against Meghan. Which is a valid point in some ways, as are the criticisms about Invictus being too royal. Except, I don't actually believe this has much of anything to do with sincere royal engagement. Nor is the issue merely one of a couple of missing elements. The charity does things like making ex-royal members take too much of a lead role in the charity. Royals never put themselves front and center of any charity they are patrons, tk fans, it seems they understand it's easier to go quietly. Since then, the British royal family has backed so many charities in Britain over such a long period of time. Yet the critical division separating what senior working royals don't ever do from that which such ex-royals never quite manage is to seek the spotlight. And all at the cost of the charity they say they are there to help. That's why Andrew lost his patronages. Since Harry and Meghan quit their roles as working royals four years ago, they've spent a lot less time on the real work with title and disabled veterans, who were why this charity was established in the first place, than they have plugging themselves, turning it into the Meghan show. So this is having an obvious impact on the games, on fundraising, and therefore both competitors and those veterans we want to get into sport. I cannot say I'm surprised. At all seriously, now that I think of it, how much good PR have the veterans gotten just from Invictus alone over these last few years? Because at the moment that's all we see in media coverage, it is just her, Megan, and unfortunately for the charity as soon as anyone has a pop at Megan then Harry gets very protective, said Nickel. He will say that the press didn't pay attention to those veterans but, you know, the rest of this was beyond his control. That's what he gonna say his reason whole, I can hear him ops. The only way Harry can stay on, if we are still hearing these allegations well into next year, is unless he resigns from the charity taking her with him, and how could he not given, the impact of their joint presence as a couple means it impacts adversely on its work and fundraising. I wouldn't be at all surprised if somehow, UK government funding were to have its strings attached, in some fashion tied to how far and how wide Harry and Meghan's role, their presence, and fingerprints, shall retreat or disappear. At this rate, the charity will implode because of self-interested exploitation, ensuring Invictus Games collapses in tatters by 2027. That's not what the charity was established to do in 2012, when it counted a lot of government and royal backing. Previously it was completely fine up until 2018, I would hope that no British Labour, Opposition Socialist Party, government or Conservative government, using money taken in taxation unfairly from people and given to them because of their hard work, is going to feel that they can help support, let alone bail out, what with the problems we are having this year, this event, he said. My take on it is, they're just using Invictus as a way of promoting themselves, Harry added. It hardly matters what the actual reasons are that cause the charity to exist. It is also going to stir up the anti-royal feeling a little sympathy for Team Sussex at this point as their real working royals are going to get splattered with that too and they have nothing to do with it so, I mean, it's my own personal opinion that the British government will do everything it can to ensure this doesn't happen. So what exactly can be done? Because the only reason Harry and Meghan will agree to step down is if they're confident there's no price to pay for such a move. If they think for one second this isn't going to see the working royals once again dipped into a bigger scandal, they're sorely mistaken. If they did that, I'm certain they will step down voluntarily. They'll claim whatever. God knows what they'll claim, he said of Trump's lawyers at another point in the interview they'll have an excuse, but they're going to continue not standing down until they are ready. And the Invictus Games is not gonna want to do that to them. 8 minutes and 59 seconds, out of respect for Harry. However, I think Harry and Meghan are going to embark on a massive PR campaign anyway in a desperate bid the save face to enable themselves to be given just long enough before they are demanded. You know, the next thing you'd hear is they actually did step down alike. Or they might just decide that, hey, my reputation is fine, and become a patron again. I also don't think this feud between Harry and his own family is good for Invictus. I've just been thinking that the royal family, 
it's got all its connections with the military and they're not out supporting Harry. And more damningly for the couple's relationship with Invictus, Harry family, historically bound up in the welfare of military personnel when he was seen as their stalwart friend last year, hasn't rallied to him publicly at all. Not sure exactly what that is going to look like down the line, though I'm betting it won't be good for Harry or Invictus. Also, from the data that I have, current enrollment is about anywhere between 500 to 550 people a game. Asterisk but the vets that come back year after year are not numerous. It's actually practiced in most the countries where they try to circulate participants as much as possible. There have probably been north of 2,000 different competitors over the last 10 years, he added. I also have a sneaking suspicion that this 200 figure refers to the number of veterans now dropping out en masse from the Invictus online community. Actual event competitors are on Harry and Meghan's side over this one truthfully, as they're the ones actually getting an exceedingly pricey, all-inclusive week-long paid vacation is largely sightseeing slash entertainment slash partying out of it. Online Invictus game members obviously are not afforded the incredible benefits of live Tokyo. So, as much as writing in to ask for them to be removed from the community roles. It doesn't quite have the downside apparently the Invictus Games online community is losing all of these supporters, I guess. At any rate, it doesn't matter. I do mean, we know that veterans are very unhappy. And so I think it would be fucking appalling if Invictus has to pay for anything that's even remotely attributed to her. Of course, she could tag along if you like, but for the register's purposes she has no capacity. Forcing the veterans to allow Meghan Markle to march with them, in such inappropriate attire, completely diminishes their dignity. Invictus, obviously, should be too embarrassed to let that happen. So, how does it appear for Harry to take Meghan with him, not stepping down and yet uninvited to the party as such? Harry has spent an awful lot of public money that should have been spent on government-run services for veterans. It's obvious that he doesn't really give a shit about Invictus. But somehow he thinks that the man can be a leader, but really where did that idea come from? As for him, he was obviously not cut out to be a leader. Only one glance at this person would reveal that such an individual could never lead a mob. I think ultimately that Harry and Meghan will be removed, said Cohen, when asked how first he believes if the couple would ever come back to the competition. Meghan's way of working is exhausting for everyone. You would think Invictus would be the perfect place for Meghan to show that she really is there supporting her husband, and if not then just using Invictus as a PR tool and runway for herself. Well, if Harry wants to continue with the Invictus fold, he'll make sure Meghan doesn't go along and try to keep her paw out of the till. She's completely in the wrong and clearly best for Harry to have some involvement with their baby, but preferably miles away from Meghan. Okay. On a different note, let's talk about another story that shows how truly awful Harry and Meghan are at their jobs. Anyway, we'll get to the small print in a bit. First of all, what was this Netflix deal Harry and Meghan struck last year? There was, of course, plenty more where that came from as Meghan and Harry inked a really sweet deal with the pedigreed streaming power player for upwards of around 100 million US dollars at the time. The question is why does Netflix continue to fork out all this money when Harry and Meghan have created so little content and what they have produced has been brutally shredded? Besides, who would have imagined that they'd be the most incompetent pieces of shit this country has ever seen? Though they are no longer connected to Spotify, it looks as though Netflix will continue their working relationship with the podcast's hosts. 2. Netflix sounds like a pretty high bar, right? Now, fresh rumors claim that both the streaming service and Meghan Markle might soon surprise us all with a polo series or cooking show. And yet with the fake Duke and Duchess, there appears to be very little that is genuine about their existence. However, we're more used to seeing Meghan featured on the pages of US tabloids, posing for meticulously staged walks with paparazzi in tow and being paid thousands at those times specifically just because she was there. Those are not the spectacles that make her very popular, of course, nor do they capture the eye like the sketchy past filled with accusations of bullying and lying and general using people snazzy. 
Sadly, now stuck collecting dust at some thrift stores, her once celebrated cookbooks go unappreciated and remains devalued. I don't know what price it finally fetched, but it is pretty clear that no one did. Yeah, I remember reading a few articles when he was jumping into the Netflix deal. This is what people were talking about at that point. And this was obviously such an insane payout to talk about. And it was a lot of money. But even then, industry insiders warned us that all might not be what it appeared. But neither Harry nor Meghan know anything about the background to any of this, they don't understand the business side or have experience in that only the question of whether this would be workable hinged on their willingness to give up control and bring in actual, competent professionals who could realize it. Apparently, this was never supposed to be the case, given Meghan Markle's penchant for micromanaging and their mutual aversion to advice of any kind. And so, this particular business was a failure right out of the gate. At least some smart observers concurred on this sentiment. And in an effort to save the undertaking, they then hired reputable veterans to front the docuseries instead. With their track record of ignoring experts and background staff, unsurprisingly it's happened again, she says. Yes, Liz Garbus, a heavyweight in the world of documentary films, was brought on to direct it. The experience of working with Harry and Meghan, however, turned out to be incredibly frustrating for Liz who left the project in May this year. Production was myriad ongoing difficulties, and while Liz Garbus may have authorized the Harry Potter imagery or supported the use of doctored footage when it came to the late Queen's voiceover, her affiliation still failed to keep the enterprise afloat against upheaval generated by Harry and Meghan. Milos Balak, who worked on the Welcome to Wrexham series with actor-investors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney, Variety reports that Brian could produce a polo documentary. A lot of very good people have given them a chance and then they've blown it, which I think is troubling," the source added. There's no bigger folly than when you're paying someone to do something and they don't understand that came with strings beyond the check. They won't be able to rely on their trademark sulking for any Netflix project that is produced under the banner of their names because Harry and Meghan refuse to allocate responsibility so end up doing everything, says another. It's going to make life tough on the real experts. Would the Sussexes stay out of all the little things, they could probably be more successful. In fact, the projects might have fared better if Harry and Meghan's involvement was limited to on-camera appearances. That said, their interference, from recording and filming to even after the edit is complete, continuously poses a major concern. They might not realize that old adage that time is money. It has been four years since Netflix signed its big deal with the Obamas, and what do we have to show for it? Being that the deal they signed with Netflix doesn't contain an early termination clause and given that the duo may also be considered producers, things might get a little complicated. What does that mean in terms of payment throughout the project, assuming pay is deferred? Regardless, their behavior has definitely affected the value as content creators and one can only assume that nobody is gonna want to sign a new deal with them. According to reports, the $100 million from Netflix was a gross figure with no allowance for production costs or personal expenses and or any other charges made on top of that. The real return, which is still sizable, though well below what Harry and Meghan will likely be able generate directly. The docuseries got less critical responses, but more broadly well-received overall. Even though all of this seems to be inflated, no one is convinced that the series actually did reach a net gain or were successful as wildly claimed nor was Harry's memoir spare. Anything to do with Harry and Meghan seems fraught with difficulty. The reason is they have been very unprofessional and have shown no respect for the norms of this industry this has resulted in multiple failures, and these kinds of detract from their overall reputation while ability to receive future work. It's a warning story for Netflix and anyone else who plans to work with them professionalism and creativity go hand in hand when creating good content. Frankly, yes, it's becoming increasingly unsettling how with each one of Harry and Meghan's ventures in any capacity will be inevitably experienced unusually as they irritated some piece of the royal family. If any production company is looking to produce content in an efficient, timely manner, they would be smart not to work with Harry and Meghan. 
I want to add that a lack of professionalism, constant meddling from their part seem to be issues. In this case, as in the Live to Lead project for example, Netflix could continue with a reduced visibility of Harry and Meghan's direct involvement, keeping their name in the credits after post-production. It may be the only way to keep projects on schedule and avoid further costly delays. When it comes to Meghan's new cooking series, the show seems to be more on the lines of a spending pitch for her own brand, American Riviera Orchard, and its strawberry jam line that recently launched. In fact, it's probably a safe bet that the series will be including her preserves in addition to her signature looks. Perhaps the public offering will divert attention from what Ostrop had to say about Yum's actual content, making this endeavor just an extended, and self-serving, commercial. Speaking of which, Harry's polo doc really does sound worrying, after all he has a very controversial history when it comes to how he treats horses. Between his most recent misadventure in the equestrian market and that little incident with a pregnant mare, things were not looking good. This raises doubts about his being a part of any polo-oriented documentary. The never-ending slate of problems around their projects not only damages the reputation of Harry and Meghan, but also their ability to adhere by professional lines. Production companies or organizations seeking to hire this individual should be aware of these trends and exercise caution in all potential collaborations. I mean, it is confusing to me how Harry and Meghan managed to land the deal with Netflix that they did, considering their dearth of actual experience and success in making content. That $100 million contract you heard about seems quite high compared with what they actually produced and the numerous delays slash extra expenses they continually created. Harry's attitude to horses, as described above is a matter of particular concern, said the statement. It doesn't look like his reputation in the polo world is based upon much more than hanging around with friends who actually know how to play, friends such as Nacho. But there's a very different story when it comes to his father, King Charles and brother, Prince William who are highly accomplished polo players in their own right. It just seems like Harry is more interested because of his birthright than any kind of talent or passion for helping people, he said. But now Harry is entering into what, for him at least, are uncharted waters, despite the fact that it puts him smack in the middle of some strikingly uncomfortable dynamics without the benefit of a royal cocoon. Things that used to be his birthright, the deference and respect he has always taken for granted are starting to slip away. The evidence is in how much of a shouting match it currently is, with everyone whispering about his behavior. Image transparent color, so if any one of this plethora of scandalous stories is entirely true, he may indeed be running out of the resources and chances that used to come so easily. As for the Netflix arrangement, it does have a suspicious ring to it. It makes one wonder, how were they able to demand that much without a good portfolio or major contributions to the entertainment? Instead, it seems somewhat more likely that the numbers that were reported are highly exaggerated chest-thumping for PR value and in real terms this is a much smaller deal with back-ended payments based on certain deliverables met. Anyway, it was evident that their continuous meddling and involvement in production didn't help at all when they got disastrous results. All this continues to indicate that there might be challenges and harmful consequences looming ahead for them in their professional lives as well. That's probably a smart move on the part of Netflix, if that leaked $100 million rumor is exploitative fiction, or even inflated fiction. We think it's also likely that many of Anoni and Hudson's core fans will have lost faith in the pair, regardless of what is truly behind all this. And given their ongoing lack of productive output, not to mention the often spreadable controversies they seem to get into each time they are linked with something new, Netflix would be fully within its rights to rethink or even terminate any such contract before any tangible results emerge. Valid, too, are the concerns voiced by 2,000 former athletes who reportedly walked away from Invictus in protest of what they see as an increasingly royalized nature of a competition now at risk because Meghan signed on. These veterans have given their lives to serving their country and deserve an event that supports them, gives the funds back they've raised. Not a PR campaign for Harry and Meghan, one person wrote on Twitter. Their leaving is a reflection of their true character, 
and it says that the interests of Invictus are in being championed by veterans themselves, not by any two particular people who have repeatedly shown a lack of the kind humility and sacrifice embodied in our selfless service men and women. Harry ought to know and recognize the significance of preserving the dignity and the original purpose of Invictus. If he really does care about the organization and the veterans it helps, then he should ensure that selfish and petty ambitions don't overwhelm what this event is supposed to be all about this is something Megan tends to do, turning such events into opportunities for her to leverage and it's damaging the reputation and power of Invictus. On the veterans and for the sake of Invictus' future, it's best if both Harry and Megan simply take a back seat and allow what they created to truly shine on its own. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.